Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video, and this time it's going to be focusing on some new Raid Raptor combos that the deck has access to due to the addition of Raid Raptor Weiss Strix into the card pool. Now, this card came out in the OCG Link Varanes Pack 2 a couple of days ago, and it really changes the dynamic of how the Raid Raptor deck is allowed to function in terms of what it can do with its cards in hand. Historically, the Raid Raptor deck has been a deck that never really got to make a lot of disruptions turn one. It can never really turn its cards its combo pieces into disruptions for your opponent, at least not in any sort of way that would seem like uh, resourceful or sustainable. But now with the addition of Y Strix into the Link card pool that allows the deck to perform some Link summons a bit better and allows it to access some of its win condition cards a bit easier, like Soul Shape Force and stuff like that, what it allows the deck to do is it allows the deck to perform several different two card combos to actually put out four to five disruptions in the forms of just building a board, searching trap cards, putting Cyber Dragon Infinity on the field, and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to show you today, is three different two card combos that yield you tons of disruption capabilities, which is something the deck historically never had access to do. You would usually just use your whole hand of Raid Raptor monsters in the past to make a bunch of four Strixes and sort of keep your resource pool up, but you'd still have to hard draw your disruption cards. The only trap you could really search was Raid Raptor Readiness, and that wasn't really a disruption so much so as it was a keeping you alive type card. But now you can actually turn various two card combos into hard forms of disruption that plus you along the way. So that's what I'm going to be showing you. But before I show you these combos, if you're new here and want to see more combo tutorials or some more Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion videos, then I implore you to hit the subscribe button, essentially. I'd love to welcome you on board, and I'd like to know what your thoughts are on Raid Raptors in the comments down below, if you guys like them, if you hate them, or whatever. But so, the first two-card combo, which is Vanishing Lanius plus Tribute Lanius, two of the combos are going to be requiring Vanishing Lanius, and then the third combo is going to be not requiring Vanishing Lanius at all. So, a nice change of pace, because the deck historically has always needed Vanishing Lanius. But so, you're going to use Vanishing Lanius, Summoning Tribute Lanius from your hand in this two-card combo situation, and we're going to send Mimicry Lanius to our grave. And then we're going to immediately use Mimicry Lanius to search for Raid Raptor Nest. So, Raid Raptor Nest gets played. We can then activate its effect because we control two Raid Raptor monsters, and we are going to search for Raid Raptor Pain Lanius. Now, we're going to actually activate this Pain Lanius immediately. We need to because we need to be able to eat off of one of our Raid Raptors for, uh, for level copying before we go into y -Strix. You basically want to always set up your board with your y -Strix plays going into them with three level four wing, or with at least one level four wing beast left on the field after you've summoned the y -Strix. There are some exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, you always want to be going into it with three. That's how you get the most optimum result. But so you're going to go into y -Strix with any two of your monsters. You just want to make sure you leave a level four wing beast on the field. And now we're going to use the y -Strix as effect. This is going to summon Black Wing Zephyros, the elite, from our deck. Its effects are negated and we cannot use it as a link material, so very, very good card design on y -Strix, allowing us not to use it as a link material. Very, very good. I'm very glad that that was a, that was a card design point, but we're just going to exceed with it, so it's fine. <laughs> so we're going to use the Zephyros and the Pain Lanius into four Strix, and then we're going to use four Strix detaching Zephyros to search Singing Lanius to our hand. Now, it should be noted that all of these combos cannot use Fuzzy Lanius because Fuzzy Lanius hard locks you into Raid Raptors and we're trying to summon Phantom Knights, Cyber Dragons, and Evil Swarms along the way to these combos. So you can still play Fuzzy Lanius, it's still a very good advantage based card, but none of these combos actually use it. So it's uh, very interesting how the one of the best extender cards in the deck just can't be used. But so Y Strix triggers here to set a uh, rank up magic from our field or from our deck to the field. So we're just going to set Soul Shave Force because that is the card we're going to be using to go into Cyber Dragon Infinity. And then we're going to special summon the Singing Lanius to our field because we do control an Xyz monster. But that is not going to be the case for long. We are going to link away with the Force Strix and the Y Strix into Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardic. Bardic? Bardic? How do you pronounce this guy? I don't know. I'm an uncultured swine. Uh, <laughs> but so what we're going to do is we're going to use this guy's effect, sending the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots from our deck to the grave, and adding a Phantom Knights Fog Blade to our back row. And then we've got the Phantom Boots, uh, Silent Boots dude, that we can immediately banish to get another Fog Blade to our hand. So that's already two forms of disruption. Really good, really neat. Really, 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 really good for this deck because, like, even you could just stop there. You could just stop there. That is two traps. That is more traps than you had before. But now we're just gonna keep going. Any, we're gonna keep going further. But so, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bounce the nest for Zephyros, safely putting it back into our hand. 
And you want to do that before you activate Soul Shave Force because then it lowers your life points even further. So you'd only be paying 36 all Soul Shave instead of 38. It's just, it's, you know, it's arbitrary. You don't have to do it. You could, you could just live a life at lower life points if you wanted to. But basically, you're going to overlay these into Evil Swarm Nightmare. You're not going to use Rusty Boy's effect to pop. And then we're going to activate the Soul Shave Force, paying 36, bringing back the Force Strix into any zone, and then Cyber Dragon Infinity on top of it here. But so, paying 400 for the Zephyros before you play the Soul Shave Force, it prevents you from paying 3,800. So you would pay 38, you'd go down to 38, and then you'd pay 400, that puts you at 34. Whereas if you Zephyros first, you're at 36. I mean, it's 200 life, and life usually doesn't matter, but still, whatever. It's just one of those things that you want to do, because, I mean, hey man, that 200 life might matter. Who knows? Who knows? It might matter. But, you set this Fog Blade, and then you're done. This is a good two-card combo. This is a very, very good cookie-cutter two-card combo to be looking at in terms of structuring the rest of your Raid Raptor stuff around. It was a two-card combo. We've ended on six cards, five on board and one in hand. So that's a plus four overall, and it's one, two, Three disruptions. One's a hard disruption, a hard negate, an omni negate. Two are effect negations in the form of trap cards, in the form of the fog blades. Also, could have some niche attack blocking capabilities if you wanted to. And then the fourth disruption is Evil Swarm Nightmare, which could be a fifth disruption if it resolves optimally of booking two monsters instead of just one, because it is not a once per turn effect. It's just whenever your opponent special summons a monster or monsters, except during damage step. So, this card can prevent your opponent from going into link plays. This is just an Omni Negate to keep you like safe from things like Raigeki or Dark Hole or some weird shit like that. And then you've got the two Fog Blades that are Effect Negators. So if your opponent does manage to step up into some form of Link Play or you want to let them waste resources into it, you could Fog Blade their uh, Link Monster. Did I say Xyz Plays or Link Plays? Whatever. But so this is the first combo. Let me reset this real quick and I will show you the next one. Alright, so this is the second Vanishing Lanius combo. This is Vanishing Lanius plus Mimicry Lanius. There are definitely, uh, there are definitely like reasons why you don't want to draw this card. You'd rather open with Tribute Lanius, but this is a two-card combo that you can perform that does a similar thing to the previous combo. It just yields you one less disruption overall. Instead of ending with four to five, you end with three to four because you don't get to use Zephyros because you have to access your resources in a little bit of a different way to making Nest live and all that sort of stuff. But so. What you're going to do is you're going to Normal Summon Vanishing Lanius, which is pretty much the staple starter card in uh, Raid Raptors. The deck pretty much lives or dies by your ability to get to Vanishing Lanius, so expect that to be a common trend as people are playing this deck more and more. And you're going to link away into Y Strix, and you're going to use its effect. You are not going to summon Zephyros this time because you need another Raid Raptor name. It just needs to be a level 4 Raid Raptor. So we're going to summon Tribute Lanius from our deck. Its effect is negated. It can't be used as a link material. So, I mean, it's not really going to be doing anything for us, but we just need it to be something that we can use to trigger Nest off of, because now we've got two Raid Raptors on the field after searching this Nest. But So we're going to activate the Nest, getting Pain Lanius again, because we need to go into a Rank 4, into a Force Strix. So we're going to use Pain Lanius on the Tribute Lanius. We pay 400, we summon this, it copies itself. It's a level 4 because it copied the Tribute Lanius' level, and now we get to go into the Force Strix. So, overlaying into Force Strix, we get to use its effect, Detaching just anything to get Singing Lanius to our hand, and then our Y Strix is going to trigger, setting our Soul Shave Force to our back row. So we've already got the Cyber Dragon Infinity playline on lock, and now we're going to start stepping up into our Nightmare again. So we're going to special summon the Singing Lanius because we do control the Force Strix, and then we are going to link away into Phantom Knights of Rusty, Rusty Barty Man, Rusty Boy. And so we're going to use Rusty Boy's effect, and we're going to send the boots to our graveyard, but because we don't have access to Zephyros, we now need another, another level 4. Now, we could not get another level 4, we could get just a Fog Blade, and then search another Fog Blade, and end on Cyber Dragon Infinity, and two Fog Blades. And in that instance, you could use Force Strix to search just a monster to keep in your hand, instead of Singing Lanius. That's very much a valid option, if you don't want to play Shade Brigandine. But if you are playing Shade Brigandine, just for the capability of using it in this scenario, you're capable of ending on uh, Evil Swarm Nightmare. So there's two different ways you can play this combo out. It's end on Double Fog Blade and have a monster in your hand that you searched off of uh, Force Strix, or it's make Nightmare Infinity and end on one Fog Blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the Shade Brigandine to our back row off of the Rusty Boy, and then we're going to activate the Silent Boots to search for Fog Blade. In this instance, like I said, you could modify the combo. It's completely up to you. Uh, but then I, pr I prefer to you know end on the nightmare because the nightmare is two forms of disruption. Like if it resolves, it's such a it's such a hard card for your opponent to play around 
because it just like puts two cards face down. It's Book of Moon twice. So we're not going to use Rusty Boy's effect to pop, but we are going to activate Soul Shave, bring back our four Strix, and we're going to then overlay that into Cyber Dragon Infinity, and then we can set the Fog Blade here. And so we have one Fog Blade Negate, we have an Omni Negate off Cyber Dragon Infinity, and then we have two Disruptions off of Nightmare. If it resolves optimally, but if it just resolves once, that's still one disruption. That's completely fine. This card is so awkward to play around when your opponent's playing a Link combo deck. But if you had knowledge that your opponent was playing something like maybe Sky Strikers or whatever, um, and you wanted to just out-resource them, you'd obviously probably just do the other play with the Double Fog Blade and keeping the monster in your hand. It's just, it's very adjustable. So it's not as powerful of a play as the Vanishing Lanius plus Tribute Lanius because Tribute Lanius just gives you those resources anyway of Double Fog Blade plus these cards. But with the Mimicry Lanius play, you have the option of taking a different approach depending on what you know the matchup to be. But so, this is still pretty good. It's still a plus three. You start with two cards, you end it on five. Three disruptions, possibly four because Nightmare could be a second disruption by itself. Pretty good to me, all right? But so now I'm going to reset this one more time and show you the third combo, which does not revolve around Vanishing Lanius at all. All right, so now this third and final combo does not require Vanishing Lanius in your opening hand at all. It's actually really weird in terms of what cards start this combo. You wouldn't think that it would do all of this nonsense, but it's Raid Raptor Last Strix plus the Rank Up uh, Magic Phantom Knight's Launch, or whatever its actual name is. But it does require one card that we do not have yet. It is an OCG exclusive Rank 7 Raid Raptor Arsenal Falcon. We're specifically requiring this for its effect to summon a Raid Raptor from our deck to be essentially a starter card with the Last Strix and the uh, Rank Up Magic card. But basically, I'm expecting them to import this to us from the OCG when they import Y Strix to us, because one, that would only pad out the set they're trying to import Y Strix in even more to make it even more of a selling point. It'd make people more interested in Raid Raptors because they'd be getting, you know, the cards that they don't have in the OCG like Air Raid um, and uh, Arsenal Falcon and stuff like that. There's probably a couple more Raid Raptor cards that the OCG has that we don't. I just can't remember them off the top of my head. But so this is a card that is an OCG uh, exclusive card right now. But if we got Y Strix imported in the future, I personally would expect Konami to import this card with it because it only makes business sense, right? But so, this two card combo, Last Tricks plus Rank Up Magic Launch, is all we need for this. And it looks so weird to think that this is a starter card and like a starter play, but it just happens. But so, you're going to use Last Tricks and you're going to summon any Rank 6 Raid Raptor from your extra deck. Could be Revolution Falcon or it could be Air Raid. Literally could not matter less. And you're going to use the Rank Up Magic, uh, the Phantom Knight's Rank Up Magic Launch. That one. <laughs> you're going to overlay the Arsenal Falcon, the Rank 7 Arsenal Falcon, on top of the Rank 6 Raid Raptor, and then the Rank Up Magic equips itself as an Xyz material. That's important. So, what we're going to do here is use Arsenal Falcon, and we're going to specifically detach the Rank Up Magic card to summon Tribute Lanius from our deck. Now, its effect's not negated at all. It's completely unrestricted. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use its effect immediately to send Mimicry Lanius to Grave, and then use Mimicry Lanius, banishing itself to search for Nest, and then we're going to immediately activate the nest. Use the nest's effect to search for pain lanius because like I said previously when you're going into white Strix, you sort of want to make sure you leave a level 4 wing beast on the field that's what allows your Zephyros plays to be live so we're gonna use pain lanius copying the tribute lanius's level paying 400 boom we're all set and ready to go but so now from here we're gonna play we're gonna play around with the EMZs a bit so we're gonna use white Strix linking away with the Arsenal Falcon and the Tribute Lanius, summoning the Weistrix, and then we're going to activate both Weistrix's effect and Arsenal Falcon's effect. So, what Arsenal Falcon's effect is, is if it was sent from the field to the grave while it had a Raid Raptor monster equipped to it as an Xyz material, you can special summon a Raid Raptor monster from your extra deck, except Arsenal Falcon, and if you do, attach the Arsenal Falcon from your graveyard to the new monster. So, we're just going to summon Ultimate Falcon for free from our extra deck and equip the Arsenal Falcon to it. So we're just going to get a Towers for free on the way to doing our combo sequence. Arsenal Falcon is an insanely good card. But so, from here, all of our stuff triggers, our Y Strix triggers because the Arsenal Falcon was summoned. Or uh, not because the Arsenal Falcon was summoned, because the Arsenal Falcon triggered its effect to summon the Ultimate Falcon. Uh, so we get the Soul Shave and we get the Zephyrus from our deck and that goes with our level 4 Winged Beast that is still left on the field to go into our Four Strix. And so now we're going to use Four Strix, detaching the Zephyros, getting Singing Lanius to our hand which we're then going to immediately special summon because we control two Xyz monsters. And then we're going to make 
Rusty Boy with the Force Tricks and the Weiss Tricks over in the other extra monster zone. So we just summoned the Ultimate Falcon over here for free, and then we just vacated it. We just left it off to be by itself. We're working on this side of the field now, so we can summon our Infinity and our Nightmare. But so now, we're going to use Rusty Boy, mill the boots, add Fog Blade to our back row, and then we're going to use the Silent Boots to add Fog Blade to our hand. So that's two disruptions right there. And then we get to use the Zephyros, bouncing the nest to put the Zephyros onto our field. And then we get to overlay the Zephyros and the Singing Lanius into Evil Swarm Nightmare. No Rusty Boy destroy. No, bad Rusty Boy. And then we're going to activate the Soul Shape Force on the Force Strix. And then rank that up into the Cyber Dragon Infinity. And so now we can just set the Fog Blade and now we're done. So we've got this Ultimate Falcon, which if you're unversed with what Ultimate Falcon does, it is unaffected by all card effects. Boral Sword is a commonly played out to this card because Boral Sword would attack it. Boral Sword would gain half of its attack. It wouldn't lower Ultimate Falcon's attack at all because Ultimate Falcon is unaffected by Boral Sword, but Boral Sword doesn't have to be able to affect the monster. It just has to be able to gain the attack of the monster that it's attacking, and that doesn't affect the monster. So, like, uh, that's an out. But we have Double Fog Blade, an Omni Negation with Cyber Dragon Infinity, and Evil Swarm Nightmare to potentially prevent our opponent from ever making the Boral Sword. And in this instance, Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon is really powerful because it's got four lines of protection against it. Your opponent has to Kaiju it, your opponent has to, like, Sphere Mode your board, something like that. And even if they did do that, like, if, they, if these got Sphere Moded, if all three of these got Sphere Moded, right, you still have two copies of Fog Blade in your back row, they are still two disruptions. So your opponent gave up a card in their hand and you still have two disruptions. So this is a pretty strong play. I really like all of these two card plays. And this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus five. This is seven cards that were generated out of two. Um, this is just a really good like play. And you start it with like the weirdest cards with Last Strix and Phantom Knight's Rank Up Launch card. That thing. I still can't remember his name. The Phantom Knight's Rank Up Magic Launch. Yes. I'm so used to, like, seeing it in, like, OCG names, where it's the Phantom Knight, Rank Up Magic, the Phantom Knight's launch, um, whatever. But anyway, so this is what we end up with, and this is really strong. In all of these two-card combos, it is really strong. Like I said previously, Raid Raptors historically never got to make their own disruption. If they did, it was, like, one random rank four, like, giant hand or something like that. But usually you weren't able to do that because you were playing, like, Fuzzy Lanius, and that was locking you to Raid Raptors. So all of your disruption had to be cards that you were, like, drawing, like trap cards. And you were just building your hand full of Raid Raptor monsters with Nest, Fuzzy Lanius, and Force Strix to, like, keep your advantage game up. And then you'd be drawing into traps. But with the current Raid Raptor uh, scenarios that I showed you, you can literally make boards with three, at minimum, disruptions on them out of two-card combos. And that's pretty damn good to me. Now, there is an FTK that this deck can perform in the OCG by combining it with Dragoonity cards and making it land assist and stuff, but it does require Chaos Argent Force, uh, Rank of Magic Chaos Argent Force, which is currently banned for us in the TCG because of the Pendulum Zexel deck, so I don't see that card ever coming back, so we don't really need to focus on that. This is still strong enough in its own right, and it's actually sort of fair in how it does it, because like, it's just accessing these cards purely. It's not like Link comboing into Oblivion. It's literally the simplest combos, and easily disruptible, and could easily be broken through because, like, it's not like just a bunch of monsters that are going to kill you. Like, this isn't going to kill you anytime soon. It's got 950. The biggest, like, threat on the board on the most on most of these combos that don't involve summoning Ultimate Falcon is Cyber Dragon Infinity. That's, like, the biggest threat. Um, but most of the stuff that this deck accesses is literally back row. <laughs> and you're not attacking for game with Fog Blade uh, unless you're reviving, like, Rusty Bardic. But those are all, like, hypotheticals. But anyway... That is all for this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Let me know if you like Raid Raptors, if you're hyped for this sort of thing being possible, or if you're just mad that another combo deck just does nothing but shit out disruptions. Let me know. If you're new here, like I said earlier, subscribe. If you want to see more combo videos and more Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion videos, I'd love to welcome you on board. And links, as always, are in the description down below to my Twitch page, where I stream regularly, and my Discord server, where I chat and with where you chat with me and a few other people on a daily basis. I can't speak. I'm getting a little bit too excited at the fact that it's getting really hot in this room because of this damn light. But, like I said, link to the Discord is in the description down below. If you're interested, I'd love to see you around. Streaming link. I'd love to see you around there as well, if you're interested. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as I've already said. Thanks for your time, as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.